Jesus walks on water. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back in the boat and cross to the other side of the lake, while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up to the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came towards them, walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified, and in fear they cried out, It's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Do not be afraid, he said. Take courage, I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if this is really you, tell me to come to you, walking on the water. Yes. Come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back in the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped him. You really are the son of God, they exclaimed. We're going to stand now to affirm our faith by using one of the three ancient creeds of the church. So would you please stand? There are uh, three ancient creeds of the church, the Athanasian Creed, the Nicene Creed and the Apostles' Creed. And we use those last two, the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed, in our worship still today. And um, we're going to say the Apostles' Creed together now. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Will you please sit down? If you weren't here when I explained the other week about um, the Holy Catholic Church, in the other creed, in the Nicene Creed, it says we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Now, uh, Catholic is, an, is a Greek word, an ancient Greek word, which means universal. So when we say that we believe in the Catholic Church, we believe in the church of all Christians everywhere, whatever their denomination or background, whether it be Anglican, Baptist, Methodist, Roman Catholic, Pentecostal, New Churches, whatever. Uh, if they believe in Jesus and they believe in the ancient faith of the church, uh, then they are in the Catholic Church. And when we say we believe in one holy Catholic an apostolic church, what we're saying is that we believe in the universal church, regardless of denomination, that follows the teaching of the apostles. Yeah? One holy Catholic and apostolic church. We believe the teaching of the apostles from the Bible. So the New Testament comes from the apostles. It's God's teaching for us that really is our guide uh, and our, more than our guide, it's our whole life. It's what our faith and life is based on. And then we're going to have the sermon now, the word preached. Lead, will you come? I'm going to pray for you. I'm sure you've prayed for yourself uh, before today. I've prayed for you before this. But we're all going to pray to you, pray for you together that the Lord will come and speak to us today. 
Father, we do thank you for Lee. We thank you for his many gifts and the many ways that you use him in uh, our youth work, but also in all sorts of works that some are not seen, uh, but we know, Lord, take place that are mighty works for you. We pray, Lord, that you will bless him today as he brings this word from you to us. Lord, open our hearts. Help us, Lord, to seek what it is that you're saying to us. Help us, Lord, to have inquiring minds. Help us, Lord, to hear you. So we pray that by your Spirit you will anoint this work, this word today, Lord, that we may be truly challenged and blessed. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. That wasn't bad, was it? And I think it must have been the jungle song, waking everybody up and making them feel everything. Now, if you've, uh, if you've come to church this morning expecting uh, one of these services where you can just sit and relax um, and not participate, it's not going to be like that. There's going to be some participation, uh, there's going to be some examples, and I'm also going to need a volunteer um, at some point in this morning. And just a quick hint on that, I always go for the people that avoid my eye contact. So if when I say I need a volunteer, you look at the floor or your Bible or pretend you're praying, I'm more likely to pick on you. Okay. Also, just to say, if the children haven't always, uh, already uh, realized, there is stuff at the back, there's some activity books with coloring sheets and everything else for you. And well done for being in the church through the summer. Uh, Kids Church will start back up in September. But it's been really nice having the children in church. And I don't know about you, but I think they've been so, like, kind of part of it. And they've sort of been really, really well behaved as well. So, children, it's been great having you in church. Now, we're going we're gonna to introduce this. Uh, uh, Leslie read it really, really beautifully for us. But um, we all learn in different ways, don't we? Some people uh, learn by being told and by reading. Some people are visual learners. I'm more of a visual learner. Um, if I want to know how to do something, I'll often YouTube it, watch a video, and then I'll maybe go and have a go at doing it. I did that yesterday. I had to change a valve in my, my uh, basin upstairs in my bathroom. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to watch a video on how to do this first. So I watched a little video, um, and you'll be pleased to know the tap is no longer leaking um, and it's all working thanks to video. So we're going to watch a video which will show you what you've had read to you. Now, hopefully um, that will help you a little bit really get to grips with a little bit more um, of what the passage is, is saying. And as I said, it's one of my favorite um, passages, but just to give you a little bit of context, does anybody know what this um, immediately followed? This immediately followed something else that Jesus did that was quite um, spectacular, quite amazing, and it involved feeding a lot of people. Anybody know? The fishes and the bread. Fantastic. When Jesus fed um, several thousand people, that's what it followed. Now, Jesus sent his disciples across the lake. And, uh, and while, while he did that, Jesus went up into the hills to spend some time alone with his father. Now, when we read the Bible, the idea of us reading the Bible is to learn more about God, learn more about Jesus, learn more about how we should be living our lives. And I was, I've always been really, really impressed when I hear those little bits where it says Jesus went to be alone with the Father. Jesus went up in the hills to be alone with the Father. And I wonder, as followers of Jesus, how often we spend time alone with the Father. Now, for those of us that live around here, we have got hills, so we could actually go alone and, and be with, with the Father up in the hills. It might be in your house. It might be, if you're like me, and I need any peace and quiet in my house, I tend to go and sit in my car, um, even if it's on the driveway, um, because that's my quiet place. But actually, if Jesus needed to spend time alone with the Father, and he was the very Son of God, surely we need time alone with the Father. But how often do we leave that until there's a problem, until we're panic-stricken, between there's nowhere else to go, so I, I, I better go and spend some time with God and, and get his input on this, rather than it being a regular practice. Jesus made it a regular practice, so we should be making it a regular practice of spending time alone with the Father. In the Word, praying, listening, reflecting on what God has to say to us. If we go back to the text, verse 24, in the New Living Translation, it says the word, meanwhile. Now, I, I love 
the word meanwhile, because it kind of gives you that sense of expectation of something is happening. If you were watching one of your soaps, or you were watching uh, something, and all of a sudden you got this impression that meanwhile, back at the pub, or meanwhile, back in school, something was happening. It gives us that sense of something is going on. And there is something going on. There's some excitement starting in the, in the boat. When I say excitement, I don't think the disciples at the time found it particularly exciting, but they hit a storm. A storm suddenly was upon them. And they were beginning to have to really struggle against this storm. Now, if, uh, if I handpicked some people this morning, young Trevor maybe, um, and uh, some other people, and I put you on a boat, and I put you in the middle of a lake, and all of a sudden a storm got up, you would have every right to be afraid. Because as far as I'm aware, I don't think there's any experienced seamen. Uh, any, anybody here particularly good with boats? Anybody been on like ships and boats? And uh, We went away on a ship for the youth weekend this year, and uh, so some of us are very experienced. It was a permanently moored ship, um, which is beside the point. But, but actually, the type of boat they were in wasn't a massive like cruise liner. It was a little boat. And it, and it wouldn't have been particularly large. And they were starting to panic. And now, if they were panicking and they were getting fearful, we would have been petrified because these were experienced fishermen. These guys were used to sudden changes in the weather. They were used to this kind of thing going on. But then something else happened. If they weren't already a little bit fearful, a little bit afraid, all of a sudden it says about 3 o'clock in the morning. Okay, so how many of you... Um, how many of you experience 3 o'clock in the morning? Put your hand up if you experience 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah? The older I get, the more I see 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, and I do experience water, but I, I will leave that one. Um, I'll leave that one with you. Um, but 3 o'clock in the morning isn't the best time of day, is it? You know, if you're already working really, really hard and trying to control a boat, and then you're looking out and you see something walking towards you on the water, you're kind of going to be thinking, this isn't good. This really, really isn't good. We're, we're potentially going to drown because the water's coming into the boat and the waves are up and, and there's thunder and lightning. And now we've got this object walking towards us. Now, this, this person, they initially thought it was a ghost. Now, I don't know if you've got the significance of this. Jesus was walking on the water. Anybody ever done that? Yeah? Anybody? Okay, I need a volunteer. Okay, I told you this is going to be interactive, so don't avoid my eye contact. Okay, <laughs> is anybody going to volunteer? It's, it'd be great if someone did. If not, I will pick someone. So, Steve, well done, thank you. Come up here, Steve. Could you very quickly take your shoes and socks off, please? Okay. So while Steve's doing that, we're just going to go back to the boat. Remember the the lightning and the waves. Come on, Steve. Oh yeah. Okay, but. Jesus was walking on the water. So what we're going to do this morning, we are going to attempt to reenact that. And every single one of you is going to have a part to play in this, okay? Now, underneath my, uh, my car blanket, which I don't keep on the parcel shelf because I'm not old enough yet, okay, we have some water. Okay, Steve, come up here, please. Okay. Okay, there's a, there's a towel for you when you've finished. Okay, now what I want you to do, I want you to stand here. Don't go in the water yet. Now you can all see, there's no, there's no trick here, okay? You can see, does everybody agree? Does anybody not believe that's water? Okay, Helen, it's water, isn't it? Yeah? It's definitely water. Steve, it's, it's a little, I've warmed it, so it's not freezing cold. I want you very simply to step in the middle, but I do not want you to sink into the water. I want you to, to stand on it. Okay? Simple as that. And if you do that, I can guarantee you will be church warden for life. Okay? Okay? Right. Have a go. Just see if you can do it. No, 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 no. Go back, go back, go back. No, no. No. Remember what I said? On the water. Not, not in the water, on the water. Because it's quite simple. Jesus did it. Okay? No, you see? Okay, try the other foot. Maybe it's just a, it's a right foot thing. No? Okay. Okay, no, 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 fair play. He's brave enough. He's tried it. You're in the water now. So what you're, I want you just to try and lift your foot up and balance on it, on the water. No, 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 on, on top of the water. You can't do it, can you? It's pathetic, Steve. You're really pathetic. You can't do it. Okay, maybe it's because it was windy and rainy. 
Okay, so I need you guys to do some sound effects of wind and rain and... That's back. That's it, come on. Now, try again, Steve. Try again. No, okay, 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 quit. They, they, you're not holy enough. <laughs> right, take a towel. Let's give Steve a clap for, for joining in. Okay. Thank you. It, it can't be done, can it? Walking on water cannot be done. You and I cannot walk on water. Okay? Jesus can. And why can Jesus walk on water? Because actually, Jesus was there in the beginning. Jesus was there when the seas, when the lakes were created. He has authority over everything. So he was able to walk on the water. Now, these fishermen were quite afraid. But what did Jesus say to them? As soon as he saw they were starting to get afraid, what did he say to them? Did he say, oh, don't be so... How long have I been with you? Don't be a chicken. You can see it's me. He didn't, did he? He immediately said, take courage. Take courage. I am here. Now, I can imagine that the moment they heard that, something probably changed. They probably still saw everything that was going on around them and probably still a little bit scared, but they probably wouldn't be quite as afraid. Now, it didn't actually show it in the video because they, they did it in a slightly different way, but Peter, I love the character of Peter. I think Peter, of all, my, of all the disciples, I love Peter the most because you know what? He got so many things wrong, but he got them wrong because he tried. Yeah? And we're very hard on Peter at times, but Peter, I thought, you know, he was, he was, he was tough, he was impetuous, he was, he was willing to have a go. And he said, Lord, if it's you, call me out onto the water. So Jesus says, come. Now, can you imagine how much, how much guts it would have taken to get out of that boat? It would have taken enough guts to get into the boat in a storm, but to physically step out of that boat. What do, we, what do we tend to think? When this passage is often preached, we preach about the little bit of that faith, that Peter didn't have enough faith to walk on the water. We don't very often say, how much faith did he have to get out of the boat in the first place? Because he's in that boat, waves, crashing, storm. And all of a sudden, he climbs over the edge of the boat. Now, he was a fisherman. He knew water. He knew boats. And he was bright enough to know that when it's stormy and you're in a boat, one does not get out of the boat and try and walk on the water. That just doesn't make sense. But he did. You can imagine him putting one leg over the side and then realizing that his foot's not sinking and being like, wow, this is pretty cool. And then getting the other leg out and putting the other one on and then realizing that, wow, this feels like solid ground. What's going on? And then, then he started to walk towards Jesus. Can you imagine how that must have felt? Have you ever done anything so exciting that you wouldn't believe that you could do it? I've done things in my life. I can remember years ago when I, I had my HGV test and I really didn't think I was going to pass it because there were certain things I just really couldn't get to do. And then the test came and I did it and I was over the moon because it was something I didn't think I was going to be able to do and I'd done it. But that was nothing compared with walking on water. There he is, standing there, looking at Jesus and he's walking on water. Then what happens? He takes his eyes off of Jesus for that small moment. Were well, you going to volunteer what happened? What, can you tell me what happened? When, Jesus, when, when Peter stopped looking at Jesus, what did he do? What happened? He went, he sank. Thank you. He, did, he took his eyes off Jesus and then he began to seek. Now, can you imagine how much fear he must have felt at that point? It's like Jesus called me out onto the water. I was walking on the water. And then it says in Scripture, he began to sink. Now, when I imagine beginning to sink, I imagine that kind of, you know, I mean, the video, he kind of just dropped down. But can, I kind of imagine it as a kind of gradually sinking on the water. I don't know if you've ever seen Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, there's that scene where Captain Jack Sparrow is on the front of his boat, and he's standing there, and it slowly sinks under the water. Or you see those cartoons, particularly Roadrunner, where uh, you know, they've run to the end of the cliff and all of a sudden his legs are still going and then he's like a <whistles> down. That's what happened to Peter. Peter went under the waves. Now at that point, he might have thought, well, Jesus talked about baptism, now I've done mine. Um, I would imagine he had some thoughts going through his mind like, okay, I'm, I'm going to drown because trying to swim in a storm is nigh and impossible because the waves and the currents would be pulling you down. But what does he do? We don't know what he did because he was under the water. 
And actually, Jesus knew exactly what to do. He just leant down, took him by the hand, and said, oh, you of little faith. Now, we don't know the tone with which Jesus said that. But I don't imagine it being the kind of tone that if I was to say to Glyn, Glyn, you've got so little faith, ridiculous, like that. I don't mean that, by the way. Apologies. Okay. I imagine it being Jesus, I can imagine Jesus saying it with a smile on his face. Peter, you've so little faith. And just pulling him up. And it being done in a loving and a kind way. Peter knows what to do, doesn't he? He knows to trust Jesus. Now, referring back to something I said earlier, Peter took a lot of faith to get out of the boat in a storm. When Jesus pulled him back up, when they got back into the boat, what happened on the boat? It says they began to do something. What did they began to do? They worshipped. Now, what else could you do if you've just seen somebody walk on water, one of your fellow disciples has stepped out, and even though he sank because of lacking faith and not trusting, he still walked on water. If you've seen Jesus do that, what else can you do but worship? There's not much else you can do. Now, as I was reflecting on this passage and as I was reading it and I was preparing, I was asking, Lord, what, what do you want to say to us today, 2017, in August, in Luton, in Bushmead? And I really got a sense that what the Lord was saying to me was, I'm in charge of everything in your life. And life is stormy. And as I was reflecting on that, I literally um, had a, a phone call from, from Glyn. And we were talking about other matters. But one of the things Glyn just said to me was, life's complicated, isn't it? And that line really, really hit me. Because do you know what? Life is complicated. Put your hand up if you think from, um, from the moment you were born to now, your life has just been complete breeze. You know, it's been an absolute holiday. You feel like you're on holiday every single day. You've not had any problems. Life's just amazing. And you just wish that you could go back and live so many bits of it all over again. Does anybody feel like that? No, we don't, do we? Because life is complicated. Life is difficult. We have storms. Those storms might be our health. Those storms might be financial. They might be employment. There are so many things. There may be a family issue. As a family, we're going through some uh, real difficulties um, at the moment, some things we're having to come to terms with. And it's been awful, really, really, really difficult the last few weeks. But do you know, one of the things I've learned in all of these things, when we have our eyes on Jesus, it doesn't stop the wind and it doesn't stop the waves and it doesn't stop all the rubbish around us but it gives us a different focus. Peter stayed above the water until he took his eyes off of Jesus and he looked at the circumstances around him. We can be going through anything. And I don't know what you're going through or what you've been through or what you might have coming up. But I can tell you now, if you put your focus on the Lord Jesus Christ, he will take you through it. He may not magically make it all disappear for you, but he will give you the strength to go through it. And my challenge for you this morning is, don't always look at the size of your problem and what you've got going on. Look to the one who had the authority over those waves. Because those waves were the same waves that Peter stood on, and yet where were the waves? They remained under Jesus' feet. Nothing was beyond Jesus' power. Nothing is beyond his capability. And he has promised, and I love Matthew 28, verse 20. It says, teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you and be sure of this, I am with you always. Not I am with you some of the time. Not I am with you when things are going easy. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Now, just as you, we, uh, we finish the talk for this morning, we're going to play a song. Um, I was listening to UCB radio the other day, and I came across a, a song by a group called Unspoken, Christian, um, Christian band. And I've since downloaded four of their albums because the songs are so worshipful but so powerful. And I just want you to focus on these words for a few minutes as we finish up. <laughs> 